Chaplin April. Uh, I did a video yesterday in Spanish just for my Spanish speaking friends and friends in Costa Rica uh, about the church property that um, where my parents had founded um, the church when I was growing up. Uh, it, that property has actually been in um, like some sort of legal battle for 12 years and uh, I was just giving them an update uh, maybe I should say a little bit about that um, someone that my dad knew in California was the donor for the money to buy that property 30 years ago I think it was more than 30 years ago now maybe 35 and so the property was never put in my dad's name because my dad did not want that. He wanted it to be ministry and he didn't want it to seem like, you know, he just, I don't, I really don't know actually all the reasons why my dad did that. But whenever this person that my parents put in charge of the property decided he was going to try and steal it, basically that's what it is. And he was a good friend of ours. I mean, he was someone that we trusted and that we looked up to and that we confided in. I mean, obviously we left the property with him to watch over it. He decided he was going to use, I guess, what they call squatter's rights uh, in Costa Rica because he had been there so long. Whenever my dad came back and was here for years, uh, he just was like, hey, you know, I can just claim that this is mine. So that's what he ended up doing. I'm sorry, but that's not, you know, the Christian way. It is not what God would tell someone to do. So it is not a Christian thing to do. You know, he totally violated our trust and everyone at the church that we know. Um, my uh, friends I still have there, they're all still very hurt over the whole thing because that church was established and we they were all... Um, members of the church and they all you know loved it we grew up there together and now this property is like sequestered and the guy you know he won't wouldn't let anyone on the property that used to be there and now he was holding services there but obviously god is not going to honor something like that and it's not going to be allowed to grow because god is not behind that so you have like 20 people congregating there and you know because he, that's his thing, and that's how he makes his living, I guess. So, my dad had had to start legal proceedings way back before he died, and I remember him telling me a little bit about it, uh, but I didn't really know all the details, because I hadn't, just, I hadn't been involved, you know, in, in all that time. But that was like a year or two before my dad died so i hadn't known all these years what had gone on with that i knew there was a legal battle but i was never able to talk to any of the attorneys like i didn't know all the ins and outs so when i went to costa rica in april of this year um i talked to my good friend edgar and his family so edgar and his wife and kids they run a church uh, in San Pedro, which is like way far away from where this original church property is. But his story is that Luis, the guy we left in charge of the property, was not doing things right like years and years and years ago. And that's why he had to leave and establish a church somewhere else because Luis was already, had already gone off the rails, you know, that long ago, which was news to me. I didn't know that this had all happened I did know that, but I didn't know all the stories and all the things that had happened. Um, like Edgar said that they went to him saying, we want to go to seminary, you know, we want you to send us out and all these things. And Luis was like, no, we're not doing it. So my dad never knew all of that. My dad really never had the uh, gift of discernment. So he never really discerned this, but I knew a long time before that Edgar had been hurt and had left and to me, Edgar had the right heart. But of course, I didn't know what to do about it. I couldn't convince anybody. So anyway, my dad finally realizes this back in 2000, let's see, 2010 or so. So Luis tries to steal the property. He's going around telling everyone in Santana in, in the town that he found the property and this is all him and that's his and all this stuff. 
Well, everyone there knows he's lying because everyone knows my family there and they know the whole story, especially all the churches and the pastors and things. So, you know, dude, no, no one believes you. He actually had the audacity to take my dad to court for a property that my dad found and my dad got the donor for and we brought Luis into the whole situation and let him live on the property um, to watch over it. And he, you know, was ministering and pastoring and all these things while my dad was gone. So he has the gall to take them to court. So Edgar teams up with my dad and actually goes to court. This is about 12 years ago and defends him and defends the property and tells the judge, you know, all the things um, that really happened. And Luis was saying things like, um, oh, I put, you know, I put my heart and soul into this, you know, into, into this property and, and this ministry and, and I have invested a lot in it. Well, actually, no, you haven't because I saw the church myself with my own eyes three months ago and it looks horrible. It has not been taken care of. I mean, the building should look way better than it looks. It, it has been totally uh, just mistreated, neglected, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's been no new paint, nothing's been done. You know, it, it all looks the same as it did 30 years ago. So I don't know how many you put all this investment in it because obviously you did not. So I found out that um, through a series of events and this, this friend that we have found this information for me and found out that the church had been put into this foundation. Well, the foundation had the last name of this man that I know donated the money. So I tracked him down and they actually called me a few weeks ago and I actually spoke to the man. And I and he said, well, what did you wanna let me know? And I said, well, I'm just gonna be bold and tell you exactly what I think, which is that that property should be under the leadership of my friend Edgar because he was the one that had the right heart and was sent away from the property all those years ago whenever uh, he should have been the one to stay and the wrong person stayed and tried to steal the property and he's like oh you told me you you called me to tell me that Luis was a bad man I already knew that you know I've been he's like we've been in court battles with him for 12 years and I was like oh okay well I'm glad you knew that but you didn't know the part about Edgar so he said yeah that is a very, very interesting thing that you're telling me. He didn't realize that me and my siblings actually grew up in Costa Rica. We were there for 10 years. He didn't know like some of the details. He did know my dad. He had met my dad, you know, back when, um, and he knew that my dad had passed away. I don't think he even knew how to contact any of us. So it was a good thing that I was able to tell him all this. And he's like, well, we were actually thinking about um, selling the property. Do you know anyone that would be interested in buying it? And I said, you know, I can ask Edgar if his organization would buy it, but I don't really know because I don't even know how much, you know, it would be or I, I don't know. Um, but I said, if you want the ministry to continue um, and you, you know, this donation was for the church and for it to be a ministry and this this property is like strategic because it has like two entrances from two different roads that go into the town and it's it's very um it, it's in a really awesome area where it could really touch a lot of people and i said and plus it should have like a a, a bible school on there a, a children's thing you know there's so much that could happen with that property and i said i just wish that you guys would decide to go ahead and let it continue for the ministry you know um and if you do then i think that edgar should be appointed and i said he already has another property that was donated through the organization that he's gone to and they have a church established there so he could have two churches and you know this could all work and whatever so i told him i'd email him send him photos blah blah, blah which i actually did so when I went to Costa Rica this year, I went to Edgar's church, I attended his church, and he actually has a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's called um, Iglesia Berea San Pedro, something like that. And he streams it live every Sunday, so you can actually watch his 
service and his wife is the worship pastor. His son plays the drums, his daughter does like um, youth. So Leo, my friend, my good friend Leo took me and we went to church there. Well, when that Sunday, Edgar surprised me um, this is kind of my birthday month and everything, but um, so he surprised me and had me come up in front of everyone. And he's like, you know, this is the daughter of the man that mentored me and, you know, brought me into the ministry and all this. And I actually have his Bible in my office and I'm going to donate it to her. And so he brings my dad's Bible that he has had all these years in his office and like, um, gifts it to me like right there in front of everyone and I'm crying everybody's crying and you know his wife is there and we're like hugging and I'm like this is so special I just can't believe it so it was a really special time so I sent those photos to him and we have so many friends so many friends that I talked to even while I was there I'm like tell me how you feel about this property and what you think should happen with it and everybody was like you know we had it was like it was like those uh nostalgic memories that you have sometimes and you're like you know those were the days because it was a really special time that we had when when that church first started and the first like five six years of it where all these people came and those became our family and those are people that i'm still in touch with now part of the church family and everyone felt like it was just this special time that everyone remembers it that way when my dad was pastoring and I was growing up and we would have these meals after service and everybody would hang out together. The youth was growing and the youth all remember doing things together, raising money to put in, you know, uh, things and, and, and build bathrooms and classrooms. And it was just this really special, special era. Everyone that I talked to from that time said it that way and they're like we would love to see that property back um so that it can be used in that way because right now it's just it's really not and everyone had this horrible feeling about it like it's just been lost it's just been not only neglected but it's just been like thrown to the wind it's just all for naught type of a thing so I felt the responsibility to do what I could, which is why I tracked this guy down and spoke with him. And he's actually this um, famous car dealer, famous car dealership in Los Angeles. This guy's met the Pope and I don't know. But um, so he does things like that. He's like a philanthropist and, you know, he has a foundation and that's how they pay the taxes on the property and all that. So they have other things that they've donated monies to. That's how this all came about. So I didn't actually talk to him, but I talked to someone that works for him and he was going to relay the whole message. So I haven't heard back, um, uh, which is a little disconcerting and you know, I, I, it's in God's hands. And what I said in my video, in my Spanish video, is that it's not the property that's going to make the ministry go on. It's the people, right? So I know that the ministry affected all these people and, and the mission is going to go on through them. It's just something that's, that's part of my heart, that property. Um, because when, when we first moved to Costa Rica, um, when I was 10, um, that was like my dad's whole thing he found this perfect property he got a donor for it and me and my siblings actually this property was like an Italian ceramic factory and um, so when we took over um, I forget this guy's name he was an Italian guy and he like went back to Italy and uh, after he sold it to us and we actually went in there and had to take all the ceramics out of the the church, what is now the church sanctuary used to be the factory. And it was just full and full of all these old ceramics. And they were really cool. I wish we would have kept some of them, but, and there's actually a kiln on the property. It looks like a little igloo and it's an oven. You, that's where they would like fire the ceramics. And my dad made that into a prayer room. <laughs> so we used to go in there and we called it the igloo, but we used to go in there and pray 
and that was a kiln. You couldn't even stand up in there. You had to stoop down and you just had to sit in there. And Anyway, um, so like we put our blood, sweat, and tears into this. We, we, we took all the ceramics out. We worked and worked. We did all these things. My dad raised money to build a house on the property for Luis because he was there. He was going to be uh, watching over the property, keeping it safe or whatever. You know, he was the one that would open the doors and all the things. And his wife and daughter um, lived there with him. Well, because of the squatter's rights, they had to finally make him leave the property because if he kept living there, then he was going to be able to claim it. So thankfully, he's not living there anymore. I heard they made him go rent somewhere, but he is illegally still congregating there. And I don't think they knew that. So I, I mentioned that to them. They're still congregating there. And that's illegal as far as what the judge had ordered him to not have anything to do with it. So he shouldn't even be on the property and he's there using the sanctuary. And I know this because friends of mine just they drove by there and they saw cars there and they know he's there. It's just a known fact in the town. I'm over here praying that God would restore this whole thing. But if it's not, um, I have to be happy with the fact that the mission goes on. Okay, anyway.